So I looked at him, and I asked him a direct question: Do I have a vocation at your community? He looked at me with great seriousness, and he said, "I have two words for you, two letters for you, N O, two letters, N O, and they change my life, frankly." So let me give you a little bit more context. When I was in high school and in college, I prayed that God would guide me to the vocation that He had in store for me. And in my last year of college, I felt led by the Lord to visit the Franciscan friars in the Bronx, New York, for I love Saint Francis, and I love the idea of being a Franciscan friar. I love the community life and the prayer. I even love the food at the friary. Our cook, after all, her name was Irina Parmigiani. How could it be bad? But after spending just one week at the friars over Thanksgiving, the prior came over to me. We talk about this and that, about the different types of vocations in the church. And the different ways that you can serve the Lord, and I could see where this conversation was going, and so I asked him a direct question: Do I have a vocation in your community? And he said, "I've got two letters for you, N O." Now, what do you do when the rug get pulled out from under your life? What do you do when you thought that you were doing God's will? And then the door slams in your face. I'll tell you what I did. I got mad. I raged. I felt betrayed. I would yell at God in the night sky. What are you doing up there? And then after some time of raging and swearing and stewing, I finally tried praying. And God started to use those two letters. And oh, to do something brand new in me, because slowly I began to see that my plan for my vocation and my future had been precisely that, mine. My plan, not God's. This was my plan, and it was all about me. And then those two letters came along, and oh. And they began to break open new things, that I could let Christ define what my life should be, and how I should be living and loving His people. Because Christ has a plan for each and every one of you, and the one He had for me was one that I could never have dreamed up on my own. This dream has led me. From Singapore to Philadelphia, from San Francisco to now Nevada, from my comfort zone to a daily adventure, where God is in charge, at least He should be if I'm listening to Him. And I know that I'll be much more selfish than I am now if I had gotten what I had originally asked for. And so now, years later. I'm grateful to that prior. I'm grateful to those two letters, N O. At first, they felt like heartbreaking betrayal. Then they broke open the invitation to follow Christ in a new way. In today's gospel, another betrayal is unfolding, and dreams and plans are unraveling. In today's gospel. Jesus and his disciples—they are gathered around the table. It is the Last Supper. It is Holy Thursday. Jesus had just washed their feet, and immediately after the humble act of service, Judas got up. Judas left the room and went out into the night to sell Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. Today's gospel begins. With words that haunt me, when Judas had left them, when Judas 
had left them. He was out in the night betraying Jesus. The disciples had many dreams and plans for Jesus. They had many dreams and plans for themselves. But in just a few hours, all those plans and dreams will come crashing down. Jesus will be arrested and carried away, and most of the disciples would flee. Yet even as all of this betrayal and change is swirling around in the air, Jesus goes to teach a very important lesson. He says to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, love one another. Now, if Jesus had stopped there, it would have been very reasonable if a disciple would have raised his hand and say, now, wait a minute, Jesus, that is not a new commandment. The Old Testament is full of examples where God commands us to love each other, to love your spouse, love your children, love your neighbor. God even has the audacity to say in the Old Testament that we should love our enemies. In fact, if you read a little bit more widely, the Greek, the Roman, the Chinese philosophers, they had all taught the same things for centuries, that we should love each other. So there is nothing new in the commandment that Jesus just said. But Jesus said it again. I give you a new commandment, love each other. There is nothing new until two letters, A-S. Jesus speaks two letters. A-S, love each other as I have loved you. Now there is something new going on. If Jesus had simply said, love each other, we human beings could have taken that commandment and we could have turned it into a selfish and self-centered way for mistreat others. Love is a very easy word to define incorrectly. In fact, we human beings are so good at that that we can convince ourselves that even our most sinful acts are somehow an act of love. Now, I just made a very broad claim, so now let me explain what I just said. Why I think that we can convince ourselves that even our most selfish acts are somehow an act of love. For instance, I remember a conversation that I had with someone who was addicted to alcohol. They had recently endangered their children by driving drunk yet again, this time with their children in the back seat of the car. And they look at me in the eye and they said, well, you don't understand, I love my children. Or another conversation that I had with a man who was married, who at the same time was carrying on affairs with two other women. If nothing else, I admired his energy. <laughs> but he looked at me in the eye and he said to me, Father, I wouldn't expect you as a celibate to understand this, but I can love three women at the same time. Now you can, if the word love doesn't mean anything. And Jesus knows this. And so he speaks the two letters that should change our world. A-S. Love one another as I have loved you. And with those two letters, Jesus shows us that our life cannot be defined by our whims, by our plans, by our desires alone. Rather, it is a task of every Christian to be so focused on Jesus that he sets the agenda, that he shows us the way, that he directs our lives. This is my new commandment to you. Love each other as I have loved you. 
That's how we should love each other. And so if we are going to do that, we have to keep going back to the scriptures to find out how Jesus loves. And so I invite all of you, when you go back to church, go back home from church today, to dust off your dusty Catholic Bible. And then read the greatest love story that's ever told. Because it is in those pages of the gospel that you and I begin to see with fresh eyes what the love of Jesus looks like. So where in the scriptures might we see what the love of Christ looks like? Well, we can look at him kneeling on the floor at the Last Supper, washing the feet of the disciples, doing the humble service even for Judas, who's about to betray him. That's a new kind of love, and that's where we learn it. Or look at Jesus, forgiving even those who are crucifying him. That's where we can learn a new way of loving. Look at Jesus in the gospel, constantly teaching what's true and doing what's true. Look at Jesus setting aside anger and offering mercy. That's where we learn to love in the way that Jesus loves. Look at Jesus praying and serving. That's where we learn the new way of loving. And every week when you come to church, you have the opportunity to look at this image of Jesus on the cross. And what do we see there? We see self-giving. We see giving more of ourselves than we thought was possible because we know that there's a larger story at work, that there's a larger goal at stake. Look at Jesus, and you will discover that life is not about you, that life is not about me. It's not about my plan and my way. The more I keep my gaze directly at Jesus, the more I learn what his love looks like. And slowly, I begin to understand that he loves me and that he loves you. A love that is so deep that is beyond our imagining. So Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you. A-S. Two letters that can change our lives, that can change our world. If you and I trust them and live them. Now, is it easy to do that? I give you two letters for you. And oh, but the risen Christ is in the scriptures. The risen Lord is in the Eucharist. The risen Christ is in this church right now in this body of Christ. And the living Lord is ready to show us, to teach us his new way of love, the way to love as he loves. The risen Christ is saying to each one of us, follow me. Well, friends, let's G-O. <laughs>